This is Energy of Business Moments with Michael Seip, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant people on the planet. Hear their stories and get the most important business lessons they have learned on their road to success and get exclusive advice on how to implement their business success into your life and business. Energy of Business Moments is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board and your host, Michael Seip. Welcome to the Strategic Advisor Board Energy of Business Moments podcast. I am the host, Michael Seip, and I'm thrilled today to have on the show Marina Bajanova, who is a brand expert and entrepreneur. More importantly, she is owner and CEO of Brand of a Leader, which helps entrepreneurs craft and become very adept at using and understanding what their brand is. So Marina, welcome to the show and tell us a little bit about your business. So my business is Brand of a Leader. It is a personal branding agency for Gen X entrepreneurs and CEOs. Um, so we don't brand businesses, we brand leaders. And um, as you said, energy as part of the overall um, package of things that we look at becomes really important. We dig really deep with people uh, to understand who they are, the essence of who they are, what makes them unique, and then we build the brand uh, around it. Um, this is my second business. My first business was in a completely different space. It was in HR consulting, um, grew it quite a bit. We went national. We opened a second location, doing fantastic. COVID came, killed the business. Um, so that was the negative. The positive is that the new business, Band of a Leader, was built, and it's uh, rocking quite a bit. Wow, that's great. And so you have a lot of depth and experience, obviously, with that. So when you when you're talking about serving a clientele and getting to know the person well, what sort of market demographic do you serve? Do you serve older businesses, younger businesses? Who, who are you serving? Um, so as far as uh, business um, cycle doesn't matter to us, it's about the entrepreneur. We work specifically with Gen Xers. There are a couple of um, outliers. We, we work with a couple of people who are younger, a couple of baby boomers, but really 95% of our clients are Gen Xers. Typically, so about 95% are entrepreneurs, business owners, about 5% are CEOs, and uh, they typically run businesses that are substantial in size, um, you know, at least 5 million in revenue plus, um, and that plus can go quite a bit uh, high. But we also work with people who exit, and then they are on this journey of self-search and pivot, and what do I do next? And then personal branding becomes relevant to them. Because one of the biggest things with personal brand building is it gives us portability. Um, it allows us to pivot. It allows us to explore different things. And so we work. We do work with clients also who are um, often at that point of transformation or crossroads, and we help them figure it out. Yeah, it's very interesting how you talk about people come to crossroads. And so whether they've been established for a while and you serve that client or somebody who's got a lot of experience, quite often they know they want to go on to something else. So they sell their business or they they move into a new industry, but they they haven't been able to connect the link yet of what they bring personally to what they're going to do next. And so where you sort of do that deep dive, I could see where that's very helpful for a lot of people because you know, yeah, they can hire mentors. Yeah, they can hire coaches. But when it comes down to what's the message, you clearly have an inside, you know, pitch to that because you know exactly what, what by deep diving with them, you get to know more about them and then can tailor resting. Yes, and very often our clients, because how uh, the process works is we take them through a series of deep dives. So it's one-on-one -on -one calls and we go really deep. We started childhood to really understand the person and who they are and what brought them to the person that they are today. We go really deep. There are tears sometimes. There's a lot of laughter sometimes, a lot of deep sharing. And most of our clients say, you know, geez, this felt like a, like a therapy session. I feel like I just went to see my shrink. Aren't we supposed to be working on my brand? Um, but that's how we see personal branding. We see it as a process of deep dive and really, really understanding people at their core rather than trying to create some, you know, fictional character or persona and market it that way. Well, you know, in the customer service business, we know that we really want to get to know our customers well because uh, that builds lasting relationships and brings customers back or clients back. And so what I love hearing about your deep dive process is you're really getting connected with that person and becoming basically pretty intimate with them if they're sharing all that information with you, right? And so 
Um, so one, how would you say that's affected the loyalty of your clients because you bring that approach? Uh, we become exceptionally close. And it's really interesting because it's a process um, that brand discovery process, as I mentioned, it's a process of three deep dives, um, after which we present the brand architecture deck to our clients. And really, time after time, their feedback is, how did you get to know me so well in such a short period of time? And often people will say, I don't, very often they will say, how did you bring this out of me? Even the people closest to me don't know this. Or people will say, I feel like now you guys know me better than my wife or my husband or <laughs> my family members, um, which is really interesting. It's a bit of a different approach to branding. Again, from looking at it from the point of introspection versus identifying gaps in the market and then looking at what gaps you're filling. Um, so of course it affects loyalty. It, of course, it affects our relationships with our clients. And uh, I find that in many ways it would become all almost like their confidants for other things and develop a much, much uh, deeper relationship than just client supplier. Yeah. Well, that's great. And then for, from your perspective, I think it would sound like it'd be a lot of fun actually to get to know people that well, that they're just not a number, you know, they're not just another client that they actually are somebody that you're, you come to know really well. And, and so I would imagine that's kind of fun. How, how true is that for you? It is exceptionally fun. It is also unbelievably inspiring and we pinch ourselves at brand of a leader really every single day saying how are we so fortunate to attract these amazing people um, to be a catalyst and them showing who they are to the world at scale telling their stories it is unbelievably inspiring we um i was interviewing somebody yesterday for a marketing role for for brand of a leader and she said can you give me um, a couple of examples of your favorite clients you know the best Case, cases that you have had. And I had a really hard time and I kept going <laughs> on and on and on. And I was so excited. And I said, okay, I think this is enough, but it's very hard to choose. They're all exceptionally fascinating. We don't work with everyone. We do say no as well when people come to us and approach us. Um, the reason we're, we work predominantly with Gen Xers and are looking at a bit more of a, um, to work with a bit more of a seasoned uh, entrepreneur CEO is because we're looking um, to work with people who already have done a lot of self digging, um, who understand the value of of going deep, people who have that degree of self-awareness and also richness of stories to tell the world. That is our um, ideal client. That is our demographic. So um, we we say no to people where we feel there's that lack of desire or ability to go deep to people who we feel are just not there yet. Um, and so through that process of self-selection, also when we tell uh, prospective clients that this is how they work, not everybody feels, vast majority say, wow, this could be really interesting. This is fascinating. Some feel this is too much. And they say, just tell me what social media platforms I should be posting on. And we say, well, we don't know. We need to get to know you better first. So there's that process of self-elimination. There's a process of selection on, on our end as well. But it becomes not only fun, as you said, which it certainly is, but just absolutely incredibly inspiring. Yeah. That inspiration uh has a lot of meaning to it, right? And when you get to know people and get to know them better, you realize that every human on the face of the earth brings some value in some way. And for those people who are Gen Xers who've been uh, in business, you know, obviously they've got a lot of experience, but but more importantly, they, they've been around life for a little bit to know, yeah. you know, what what makes what makes the world go round. And um, what I love is, is, of course, the ability to to find out what that is that they have. And then, and then showcase that. Um, so that's great. And the inspiration piece is interesting from the energy perspective, because I've, as, as a lot of the listeners know, when I talk about energy, I'm talking about our core personal energy. And what that is, is our thoughts plus our emotions attached to those thoughts, plus the actions or the behaviors we take. And so if you think of the thoughts, actions, and behaviors, and specifically inspiration, that's one of the higher energy levels. And so what do performance has that impact for performance is that teams typically do better or individuals do better when they're more inspired. They're more likely to continue and sustain things rather than being told I've got to do this or I have a, or I, you know, I, I should be doing it, but I really don't want to do it. So when there's that inspiration piece, it can be tremendously motivating. So with, in that context, Marina, with you as a business owner, how would you say you've noticed how the inspiration affects you and your team energetically. 
Um, well, and also on the topic of energy, you know, it's fascinating to be talking about this, Michael, because this business was born out of energy. Um, and so everything that you're describing um, has been absolutely the um, really the beginning of the journey of Roundabout Leader and the catalyst of his growth. Uh, when I uh, lost my first business, as I mentioned to you, was very successful, seven figure uh, business doing great, and then got hit quite hard during uh, during the pandemic. Um, I, I was at crossroads myself. And so I was working with a coach and she said, well, just paint out your ideal business. What's your ideal scenario? First, she said, is it recovering the business that right now is struggling? And I said, no, if I go really deep and I connect with, my, with myself on a deep level beyond money, beyond the financial comfort that that business brought, no, I have something else that I want to be doing that feels like a bigger calling. And so she said, okay, describe that, describe the ideal client. Let's connect with all of that energetically. That's what we did. And Michael, before we even, you know, registered the business, had the business, there was no, no business, no website for the business. Those ideal clients started appearing, looking for the service that we had just created, you know, energetically, as you said, but it hadn't even presented anywhere. That's how the business was born. So from that standpoint, it's quite fascinating. And then certainly, um, the inspiration piece has been key in sustaining, you know, everybody complains about employees not being engaged and not being interested in their work. We operate on a zero employee model. We work with contractors, freelancers, interns. Um, that is that is our model of growth and our strategy. Um, so on one hand, it allows our freelancers, our contractors to be select selecting the, the projects they want they want to work on. But at the same time, they have so many different clients that you would say, well, they're going to be quite transactional in their approach to work. They're not going to be as engaged, right, as an employer that you have there and you're constantly working on company culture and engagement. For us, that's not the problem at all. They're exceptionally engaged because their work is so inspiring. Because their clients are so inspiring, it's that constant feeling of, wow, I'm getting paid to do this. This is incredible. And we have that feeling across the board, which is inspiring to us as the owners of the business. Wow. I love that. Both of those stories are, are excellent because one, on the first part, when you talk about having the ideal in mind, when we have that ideal model in mind and we're very clear about it and we bring the energy to it, in other words, we're resonating with what that would feel like then that manifests in our life. And so, like you said, you had clients before you'd even hung a website up. So that that attractor factor is pretty powerful uh, in business. And then the other part too of about the inspiration, how that rolls into your employees feeling like, even though they're contracted, that they still resonate with how important and how valuable it is to be included on such an inspiring project. So I really like that. That's a very unusual model, but a very powerful model and, and good to share that piece. Thank you. It's, it's, and again, this was also something that I envisioned before it happened. Um, I remember coming across a book uh, by a New York writer. I believe it's called One Million Dollar One Person Business or something along those lines. And she's also a Forbes columnist. And that's what she writes about. It's businesses who grow to seven figures and they have no employees on payroll. Um, and um, often it will be just one person and, for example, an e-commerce uh, business owner. And so it's just um, a solo uh, adventure. And for some people, it's contractors, freelancers, similar model. And it really resonated with me. And I saw so much beauty in that um, ability to have flexibility on both ends. You know, having worked in HR consulting and seeing how all this employee quiet quitting, that's the, you know, topic du jour, but it's always been there, right? People kind of clocking in and not being so engaged. And I had envisioned this model where it would work very differently and people would be engaged and would be excited and would be inspired. Again, envisioned it before it happened and then it happened. And it's been quite a theme at Brand of a Leader across the board for our office, for a lot of um, global speaking that I'm doing. Um, we've been envisioning it first, as you said, I suppose sending energy to it. And then we're seeing those things uh, coming come to life. Yeah, great, great. So, you know, energetically, like we can have our highs. And so there's a lot of momentum that you're describing in your business. And so that contributes to the highs and obviously the highs of getting to know people and getting to help build their brand and tell the story about that person can obviously generate a lot of that higher moment energy. But sometimes in our business, we do have low moments. So tell us a little bit about one of your low moments in the past and then how you shifted out of that, what you did mentally or what you did uh, from a behavior perspective or even emotionally what you did about it. Um 
uh, again, I will go back to that moment in time when my business crashed. And I really, you know, I had never um, experienced depression. But I think that in that moment, I came as close to it as as could be. Um, I think it was the first time that I understood what people were talking about when they were describing having been depressed. Um, I couldn't function. I couldn't move. I was foggy. Um, I felt this is it. Life is over. I'm going to, you know, lose my house, go bankrupt. My kids are going to think I'm a failure. The world is going to know I'm a failure. I'm a horrible entrepreneur because I felt this was not happening to anybody else despite the global pandemic this was just happening to me um, it was an extremely low point and I really couldn't function I wasn't sure how to proceed what I did and I have no idea why I did it um, was I had this feeling that I wanted to be of value and use to others that I wanted to help others and so what I did was I created a Calendly link I had never even used Calendly before and had always been so busy that to me, if somebody wanted to book time with me, it was always like, oh, where am I going to find the time? Well, all of a sudden, we all had a lot of time, right? Um, and so I created a Calendly link and I shared it on LinkedIn, which is a platform I use quite a bit. So it's quite active. And I said, listen, it's really hard right now. You might be struggling. You might need to talk to somebody. Maybe you want some advice as far as your career. I know a lot about that type of stuff. Let's chat. Completely booked up. Just I was on back to back calls all day long, just talking to people. And interestingly, and then I remembered attending a talk that was given by Simon Sinek when he said that uh, in those times when you're feeling really low and you're struggling, when you're helping others, things shift for you. And when when he spoke about it, it felt pretty woo to me. And I thought, oh, okay, okay, <laughs> that's nice. That sounds really sweet. But it actually worked in, 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 in that exact same way for me. Somehow it s just snapped me out of the fog that I was in. I was able to help others. And as a result, I've built incredible connections. That's how I met my coach who then helped me visualize the next business. I've met incredible people. And that feeling of serving allowed me to not feel completely um, useless. There's a complete failure. I had less time to focus on that or think about it. And also, of course, speaking to people who are struggling put a lot of things about my own situation in, into perspective because whenever it was struggle, other people struggle more. Um, so that was uh, that was one of my big moments. My small moments um, that are my low moments energetically throughout the day on a day-to-day -day basis of running a business are always connected with anything that happens that goes against my core values. Uh, one of my core values is uh, top-notch professionalism. If anything happens in the business, I feel mm, that's so unprofessional. Oh, that's going to look so unprofessional to a client. I go into a complete crash mode. There is no energy. Anything that to, that has to do with core values. Yeah. Well, that's great. I love that you have a big topic, you know, like like the pandemic period and then also something just everyday type of, of scenario where you have something that comes up that might might get you a little low. So what's interesting, of course, too, when you're talking about the service piece of being of service and that that really is obviously one of your values, that yes, it can be um, motivating and obviously get things going. But when we're of service, we're tending to think outwards more and less inwards. Mm -hmm. And and some of the biggest challenges I've seen with entrepreneurs is that they do start becoming, they become too inwardly focused. What's the impact I, I am having rather than what's the, the impact that we can have or what's the, what's the change that the other person's going to have or the client's going to have and so um one of the things in the energy levels is we talk about is that hey the, the higher up you go in the quality of energy the the more you're outwardly focused you're thinking about others and being maybe of service or doing something that can be beneficial for 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 much larger audience so i'm glad you brought that up that's a really great point for for our audience well, Marina, you know, we sometimes um, have mentors when you can, in this case, you had a coach there that, that really helped you get this new business going and it's obviously successful now, but, but more importantly, sometimes if we could beat one person deceased or living, we'd love to have a great conversation with them. So if you could meet with anybody deceased or living, who would that be and why? I could build a very long list. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm also an avid reader. So I have, uh, you know, so many people uh, that I'm a huge fan of. Um, I would say Simon Sinek um, came top of mind for me because of the whole idea of understanding your why, your purpose, 
what makes that calling unique. Um, it has inspired a lot of the work that we do at Brand of a Leader. And I've also seen how many people it has inspired among our clients who have figured out their why, who have figured out their purpose and then live life through it. And I think it's one of the most powerful, powerful uh, things to do. It's hard because I could so choose so many different people, even like, you know, dictators or some like crazy people just to try to understand. But uh, Simon Sinek came to, okay, was top of mind. So I will choose him. Is a great example of, of somebody who you could bring in and, and have a great conversation with for sure. And a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of wisdom, right? Sometimes we look for people who've got a lot of wisdom and uh, not that we don't have it ourselves, but just a different perspective. So what a great, great person to have some time with. All right. Well, Marina, tell us uh, and our audience, if they want to work with you or your, or your company, how can they do so? Um, so, Michael, anybody who um, looks at my last name uh, will see that it is incredibly difficult to spell, to pronounce. I'm Ukrainian, so it's a Ukrainian last name. But there's an advantage to it. If you put it into Google, if you Google Marina Bejanova with this spelling, I'm the only one and I come up all over the place. So that's my advantage with the name. So punching it into Google, you'll find my website, brandableleader.com, um, can uh, reach me there. And uh, also on LinkedIn, I'm exceptionally active on LinkedIn would love to connect with new people as well. Um, so with my name, I'm very easy to be found. Well, Marina Pajanova, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show today. And I really appreciate what you shared. I think a lot of that will resonate with our audience. So again, thanks for being on the show. I appreciate it very much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for listening to Energy of Business Moments with your host, Michael Seip. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates and we will see you on the next episode.